Welcome. You're once again tuned into Channel I for our next edition of our very own medical program series, IMED. And for today's edition, we will be talking about a pressing issue pertaining to a very important concept, and that is the beauty of childbirth and prospective motherhood. And we are here at Nine Wheels Hospital premises to give you not only a virtual tour, but a ton of very, very consequential information that is related to this particular topic. So do follow us and let's go check what we have in store for you. And as you can see, we're at the fertility center of the Ninewell Hospital premises. And let me tell you something, somewhere down the line within your marriage, pregnancy becomes a very consequential thing. It becomes a dream to most of the couples. But however, there are certain circumstances that might obstruct or delay this precious endeavor. So the fertility clinic is very successful in giving you the proper accurate investigations and diagnostic procedures that can help you figure out what kind of reasons are behind this um, unsuccessful thing going on. So to further talk about it, we do have a lot of interviews coming up, a lot of factual things coming up for you, and also to give you a demonstration as to what kind of a process is followed when it comes to registration, diagnostics, and treatment. So let's go check this out. And we have finally approached our discussion segment of the program and we have on board with us consultant obstetrician gynecologist Dr. Jagat Lal Vikram Arachi with us today and thank you so much for being on the show and we do have we do have a lot of important things to talk about and when it comes to childlessness this is a very you know a very crucial issue especially with the cultural perspective about fertility and so much of things going on so when a couple is trying to conceive a child um, and when they're not successful at it, what's the first thing they should do? Yeah, um, talking about this subject, if she, um, pregnancy and women, um, when a woman wants to get pregnant, not getting pregnant is a problem. On the other hand, when one does not want to get pregnant, getting pregnant is a problem. So, so these, these are two broad categories, but as you suggested, we will today talk about the woman who wants to get pregnant but is not getting pregnant. Um, this is a real problem at the moment. Uh, we all know uh, culturally when uh, a, a girl gets married, the next important thing is to see that she's getting pregnant. Um, we, if you take the lifespan of a woman, uh, born as a girl and then she grows up and she attains menarche. Uh, then the next important milestone for her is getting married and next one is to get pregnant and then she will have one or two or three pregnancies and then the next milestone of a woman is menopause. That's the end of the childbearing age. So uh, getting pregnant uh, is an important milestone of a woman's uh, lifespan. What happens when they can't get pregnant? Socially, uh, a newly wedded couple is expected to, to um, have a baby. That's a, that's a very important, very forceful requirement in the society. So the mother of the girl is waiting to see the, the grandchild, the father of the, the parents of the girl is waiting to see a grandchild, the parents of the boy is waiting to see a grandchild, probably the siblings of the bride and the groom are waiting to see their nephews and nieces, and then society, the neighborhood is waiting. So wherever this newly wedded couple goes, 
say a, a, a party, a birthday party or a wedding or a funeral or some family uh, gathering, everyone is going to come and ask, uh, uh, is it, are you not pregnant yet? So that gives a tremendous pressure for this uh, girl to get pregnant. This is simply, even if the woman doesn't, the girl doesn't want to get pregnant, there is a social pressure to such an extent, very often our girls just give up and can get, they get pregnant. Not necessarily they want to get pregnant, they probably want to do an exam, they probably want to, you know, build a house, they want, probably want to go, you know, spend some time with the, uh, the, the new husband for uh, two or three years, but then the social pressure is exerted on them to such an extent that they, uh, they get pregnant. When that doesn't happen, there are two aspects. As you, if you go to the science of it, all you need to do, all you need to have to get a pregnancy is a sperm and an egg. So egg comes from the girl, sperm comes from the boy. We all know uh, an egg is dropped for each woman every month. Fortunately or unfortunately, the calendar month and the woman's month is falling on each other very closely. So, when I say, I don't know who built the calendar month, did he do it taking the woman's month into consideration or the nature decided to have the woman's month depending on the calendar month. So, I don't know which month came first. Probably, very likely, that the woman's month came first before all these calendars were invented, the woman had a 28-day cycle. So, taking that into consideration, we all know for a woman, so there are 12 eggs for the whole year. That's all. So, not, not, not many uh, number of eggs. 12 eggs per year dropped at the 14th day of the woman's cycle. Ovulation is a part of the menstrual cycle when the ovary releases a ripe egg or ovum. Inside the ovary are hundreds of thousands of follicles. Each follicle is a hollow ball of cells with an immature egg in the center. The typical 28-day menstrual cycle begins on the first day of menstrual bleeding. During the first seven days of the cycle, a few follicles begin to grow at the same time. These maturing follicles secrete estrogen hormone into the bloodstream to prepare the lining of the uterus for pregnancy. Around day seven, all of the follicles stop growing and begin to degenerate, except for one. This dominant follicle continues to grow and nourishes the developing egg inside it. Around day 12, the follicle secretes a large amount of estrogen into the bloodstream. When the estrogen reaches the hypothalamus and the pituitary gland in the brain, the anterior or front part of the pituitary gland releases a huge surge of luteinizing hormone into the bloodstream. Around day 14, luteinizing hormone causes the follicle to undergo a sudden growth spurt. Right before ovulation, the egg detaches from the inside of the follicle. The bulging follicle releases chemicals, causing one of the two fallopian tubes to move in closer and surround the follicle. The follicle swells until it bursts open, ejecting the egg and fluid from the follicle into the abdominal cavity. In response, the fimbriae, tiny projections at the end of the fallopian tube, sweep across the ovulation site and pick up the egg. Microscopic cilia on the fimbriae surface transport the egg to the entrance of the fallopian tube. Inside the walls of the fallopian tube, muscular contractions gently push the egg towards the uterus. After ovulation, the egg lives for 12 to 24 hours, so it must be fertilized by a sperm from the male during this time for a woman to become pregnant. If it's not fertilized, the egg dissolves away and is shed along with the uterine lining during menstruation.
majority of women who come to us saying that I am married two years, I am married four years, don't know that they have to have sexual intercourse on the day that the egg is dropped. So they are unaware of the date of ovulation. Scientifically, we call it the date of ovulation. So the first thing that a couple wanting to get pregnant should do is to find out when the woman is dropping an egg. And for an average woman with a 28-day cycle, that happens on the day 14. Then comes the smaller uh, proportion of women who have longer cycles or shorter cycles. Then the thing becomes a bit complicated because then the couple finds it very difficult to find out the date of ovulation. So you may be having million times of intercourse, but you need only one uh, act of intercourse on the day that the egg is dropped so that 20 to 50 millions of sperms are sent in looking for this egg. So that happens on the day 14 in an average woman in 28 days. So when do we start worrying about it? That's the question. If the woman is 34 years or 35 years by the time she gets married, obviously you don't want to waste time waiting. But on the other hand, if the woman is only 22 years when uh, getting married, then obviously we uh, can allow the nature to get, make her pregnant for a while. The standard international agreement or, or the convention is at least two years. Leave at least two years before you start uh, investigating a couple, uh, looking for a reason why they are not getting pregnant. So that's, that two-year mark is applicable for young women, but not for older women. We can start investigating the man first, then the woman. Something that we forget generally is that the childlessness can be because of, the, because of a problem of the man. That we tend to forget. But equally, the childlessness is equally uh, responsible the, the men and women together. So when we start investigating, the first thing to do is to look into the man to make sure that he is producing enough sperms number wise and then to make sure that he is making good motile sperms, very energetic ones who can swim uh, and then to make sure that he is making sperms which are normal. Just like anything abnormal, like a Friday afternoon car, there can be sperms which are not perfect. So if he is only making imperfect sperms, then that's going to be a problem. So the number matters, the, uh, the energy of the, the, the sperm, the motility we call it, matters. And then whether it is normal or abnormal matters. And then also the, the fluid medium which is a... Uh, very nutritious thing for the sperm to have energy and to swim. Now if you think of the length that a, uh, the, a sperm has to swim from the top of the vagina until it reaches the egg which is about uh, about 10-12 cent centimeters away. It's a very hazardous journey, very treacherous, lots of germs around, lot of antibodies around and uh, it's, it's, it's one of the most difficult journeys that anyone can take. I'm talking about the sperm released from the man trying to reach the woman's egg. So there can be problems at every stage. So that's a very short introduction of man's fertility. During a menstrual cycle, one of your two ovaries matures an egg within a follicle. Hormonal surges controlled by your brain then cause one and occasionally two follicles to release an egg. If both ovaries release an egg, you may have non-identical twins, also known as fraternal twins. Long, finger-like projections sweep the egg into the fallopian tube. The egg travels down the fallopian tube, pushed by tiny hairs and awaits the arrival of sperm. 
About a teaspoon's worth of semen enters the vagina, containing roughly 300 million sperm. Less than 100,000 will pass into the cervix to begin their six-inch journey to the egg. A long, whip-like tail propels each sperm toward the waiting egg. Most sperm will lose their way. Only about 200 sperm successfully reach the egg. Fertilization occurs when one sperm penetrates the egg, combining their genetic material. The sperm and egg each contain 23 chromosomes holding all of the information that determines your child's sex and contributes to the child's genetic makeup, including physical appearance, intelligence, and personality. It's a boy or a girl. You just don't know which yet. Within 24 hours of fertilization, the egg, now called a zygote, divides into two cells. The number of cells doubles about every 12 hours as the zygote continues its trek to the uterus. During this early stage, if the cells split into two separate groups, instead of remaining attached, you'll be doubly blessed with identical twins. About three days after fertilization, the zygote has become a ball of 32 cells resembling a miniature raspberry. A few days later, it reaches the uterus as a ball of roughly 500 cells surrounding a fluid-filled cavity. On day seven, the ball of cells burrows into the uterine wall during a process called implantation. Many women have implantation bleeding or spotting at this time, which occurs about 21 days after a period before a pregnancy test could even be positive. The cells on the outside of the ball create the yolk sac and the placenta, which nourishes your developing baby. By 38 weeks, the fertilized egg has grown into an infant with more than two trillion cells. At the same time, we must focus on the woman's menstrual cycle. In normal words, the periods. As I said earlier, average woman will have 12 menstrual periods a year. So that's about four to five days of menstrual flow every month, 12 times a year. So if that is there, we can, for all practical purposes, we can decide that her hormonal rhythm is normal. Not necessarily that she's making an egg, but the chances are that if a woman is getting normal, regular, once a month periods, then we can, for all practical purposes, we can assume that she is making an egg every month. If that is not so, then we need to look at uh, why the menstrual periods are abnormal. So that's another aspect that we need to focus. Right, so we discuss with the couple the basic things that we uh, just discussed and then give them another three months or five months or six months depending on how, uh, how urgently they want to get pregnant. And then if you can find a reason for their childlessness, we need to treat them. For example, if there's a problem of seminal fluids from the man, the sperm count or sperm normality, we need to take that up. On the other hand, if the woman hasn't got a period, a period every month, if there is a problem of ovulation, we need to address that. So the, these things cannot be done uh, on a fast track because this is a natural process. Getting pregnant is a natural phenomenon. So we can't fast track them. This is where the frustration comes. Say a 35-year-old woman getting married, having looked around for uh, uh, the, the Mr. Right for 10, 15 years and found the Mr. Right and she wants to get pregnant overnight. That will not happen because uh, the natural process should be followed. There are no shortcuts, there are no fast tracks. So having given a chance for the nature to make her pregnant, if we can leave two years, then we need to uh, do further investigations, hormonal profile, then ultrasound scans for the womb, the tubes and the ovaries to see whether she is making good eggs, big enough, mature enough eggs. And then also any uh, illnesses, any 
coexisting illnesses diabetes high blood pressure cholesterol asthma thyroid you name it if a woman's got that problem there is invariably there is an impact on her getting pregnant some women are too thin to get pregnant some women are too fat to get pregnant then those issues the body mass index must be taken into consideration so all these things happen the problem in the current society is people want things pat pat uh, instant things the coffee is instant the noodle is instant the everything is instant so they think that i want an instant baby so they get married this month and they want to get pregnant next month and when they are not pregnant they go running around uh, looking for specialists and then they end up in nine wells ivf center i want a test tube baby have you had intercourse twice so that's a kind of artificial uh, thing that people are into the the the, the current society is all driven whether you want it or not you must have a baby in two months time so having done all those things given the couple enough time to get pregnant naturally then uh, if there is any problem you treat it sometimes we have this very unfortunate category of couples everything is perfect the sperm count is normal the seminal fluid is normal woman is menstruating normally making eggs normal no other illnesses diabetes everything tubes normal uh, womb normal no fibroids no endometriosis no pelvic inflammatory disease but the couple is not getting pregnant so the ivf is indicated for such people so that's a indication one for ivf unexplained uh infertility resistant to all the treatments so she gone through the mill the couple has take done all the investigations done all the treatment taken all the treatment but still not pregnant then before getting too old they should go for ivf which is the the commonly known uh test tube babies the second for some reason if the woman has lost both her tubes um ectopic pregnancy tubal illness uh, or some germs have gone through and blocked the uh, the tubes and made uh, formation of abscesses and all sorts of other things we the, the tubes become either tubes are lost taken or taken away or by operated by the doctor or the tubes have become very unfunctional or dysfunctional or a functional anything can happen so such people also should think about the test tube babies uh then if you look at the man if the sperm count is small instead of 20 to 50 million of sperms per every uh, cubic millimeter then they have n- one or two or 100 150 200 so much less than the required 20 million sperm then we can go in for sperm preparation you take a sample of seminal fluid from the man send it through a process you will see it uh, in the ivf lab at some stage uh, how the seminal fluid is prepared um, to make the chances high to get the pregnancy rates high so that's looking at the man's aspect of uh, test tube babies ivf is not a joke because that will not guarantee a pregnancy for the woman this is where frustration comes once again it's costly depending on how much you can pay depending on which hospital you go whether it is india or singapore or uk or sri lanka depending on where you are going to have it the cost will vary i think if you don't have at least about 750 uh, 000 rupees 
you must not think about test tube baby because that's more or less the minimum that is necessary for a woman to undergo the process of IVF. Having said that, not everyone who spends this money will get pregnant. So it is something like a gamble. You need to put the money, spend it and then see whether you are going to get a baby. Now the question is, what proportion of women who undergo this whole expensive, costly, troublesome, inconvenient process of IVF, how many of them can get pregnant? The international figures is one in three. I know there are different institutions will uh, do their marketing, giving you better figures. Some institutions will say, Every, uh, every second couple will get pregnant by our unit and some Indian units might say, oh, everyone who comes here will go take a baby home. So that's their marketing. But the average international, if you don't play with the figures, the figures given at the moment, a genuine, honest figure given is one in three couples. So three couples go and spend the money. Only one will take a baby home. So it's a gamble. So that is the other thing that you need to uh, focus on. Whether you have uh, that much of money to throw and see whether you get pregnant. So if you don't have that money, we all know there are three ways of earning money. Hirshi, tell me, how do you earn money? Well, there are quite a lot of ways actually. <laughs> yeah. To me, there are only three ways. Uh, beg, borrow, steal. Either you beg for money, take a uh, loan and spend it or uh, you borrow promising that you will give one day or break a bank uh, off the record <laughs> I can't say but if you can find that money then you can try that and see with the pregnancy work so uh, once they have decided right okay we've got money we've got the doctors we have found out the reason why we are not getting pregnant then they can uh, resort to this IVF and there are many places uh, established for them. Well, thank you so much Dr. Jagatlal Vikramarachi for giving us and presenting that valuable information and for today I think we are going to wrap up our interview segment but however we do have a lot more things, a lot more domains of information to discuss in our next episode and we'll be having Dr. once again on board with us for that. But until then, please stay tuned with us until the next time. So, see you soon. Thank you so much for being tuned in for, on Channel I for our own very own medical program series, IMED. And today we are going to wrap up our first session right here from Nine Wells Hospital premises. But please do stay tuned with us for the next sequel. We will be talking, we'll be continuing this important issue to our next sequel. Until then, please do stay tuned. Until then, have a good day.